Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm still Yolanda. It's another Tuesday. I know you're all out there trying to catch them all, but I'm trying to cake them all. Get it? You've been asking me for a Pokemon cake and I listen to your requests. That's what you gotta do. I gotta give you back love for all the love that you have given me. And speaking of love, we hit two million subscribers! Yay! This is bad for sound, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay guys, I've gotta cake them all. What sound does Pikachu make? Sasha? Pikachu. Oh. Pika Pika. I thought he went around sneezing. Like Pikachu! That's, that was oh. my guess. I'm in this kitchen all the time. I don't have time to play Pokemon Go. And my son is too young to play Pokemon Go. So I know nothing about Pokemon Go. To make my Pokeball cake, I baked eight pounds of my ultimate chocolate cake recipe in two eight inch diameter bowls. Once my cakes were completely baked and cooled and chilled, I leveled them in their bowls. So I just took my serrated knife and cut straight across the top of the bowl, just to give me a nice flat top so that when I sandwich them together, they'll make a perfect Pokeball. Is it a Pokeball or a Pokeball? It's a Pokeball. <laughs> 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 then I removed the cakes from their bowls, removed the parchment paper, and then I simple syruped them on both sides, so the flat side and the domed side. Now I'm going to place both my half sphere cakes onto two cake boards with the flat side down, and I'm going to crumb coat and chill. Uh-oh. Back to love, gotta cake them all. So I crumb coat and chill each half sphere with my Italian meringue buttercream and place it in the fridge to chill. If you wanna know how to make my Italian meringue buttercream, there is a link for a full video tutorial below as well as a link to my spatula set, which comes in handy for crumb coating. Now that my crumb coat is chilled, I'm gonna ice these half spheres once again and place them in the fridge to chill. Spatula drop. <laughs> I have more than one. That hurt my ear. Woohoo! It's time for fondant! Before I cover these cakes in fondant, I'm just gonna wet my fingertips to smooth out any ridges in the buttercream. And when I need to, I fill in any little gaps once again with my small icing spatula. So I decided to cover these half spheres separately because the pokeball has like a seam in the middle it's not really a seam i think i think it's where it opens that's correct sasha sasha is nodding yes. so that pikachu could jump in is that what happens no never mind <laughs> take that out <laughs> yeah, do they, they live in the ball they, yeah they do then you can actually like catch other characters with the ball yeah because you need more pokeballs to catch more pokemon Right, of course you do. Naturally. Anywho. Um. <laughs> now that I know. Because the Pokeball opens in the center, I decided to cover the ball as two half spheres and then assemble it later. I've never done this on a sphere cake. I'm gonna cover my first half sphere in white fondant. I just roll it out a quarter of an inch thick, actually a little thicker than I normally do. I cover the sphere, I tuck in the edges, like with my fingers I press the fondant up against the edges before I trim away the excess. And then I do the same to the other half of the sphere with red fondant. And I conquered my sphere fear once again. Sphere fear. Can we like... Punch like scary like, music. Yeah. <laughs> now I need to cut away a quarter inch band of fondant from each one of these cakes. So I use a cake board, which happens to be a quarter of an inch thick, uh, as a marker. I just take my paring knife and mark all the way around my sphere. And then I take the sharp tip of my paring knife and cut away that band on each half sphere. When I put these two spheres together to make a ball, that empty band full of buttercream will be where I place the black fondant, which is the opening, so Pikachu can get in. I looked at a lot of Pokeball images online, a lot, and I feel that the Pokeball looks like a little bit shiny. So I wanted to give the white half a bit of sheen, and what I did is I painted it with a little bit of pearl luster dust and lemon extract, just a thin coating so it wasn't flat white. Okay, 
it's time to fill this cake and put it together. I smooth on like a quarter inch layer of Italian meringue buttercream. I really, really didn't want the buttercream to smush out when I added the other sphere on top because it's heavy. So I took that bottom half and put it in the fridge to chill and let the buttercream set before adding the top cake. So smart, yo. Thank you. <laughs> I may not know Pokemon, but I know cake. You know cake. Once my buttercream filling layer was chilled, I added the red half sphere to the top of my cake. I just smoothed out the buttercream in between the two different colors of fondant because this is where I'm gonna lay the black fondant. I use a fabric measuring tape to measure the circumference of my ball. I can't get away from the word circumference. There's no synonym for circumference, is there? <laughs> and now I'm gonna roll out some black fondant, a quarter of an inch thin, that is long enough to go around the circumference of my Pokeball and wide enough to fit within the buttercream band. So yo, some fans said that we should refer to this kitchen as the How to Kick It Gym, and you as the How to Kick It Gym Leader. Why yeah, are they so called gym leaders? I guess they're actually like in gyms and then so you work your way through the gym. So it's a workout game. <laughs> I'm be the trainer offering people cake. <laughs> Forget about them. <laughs> Gotta cake them all. <laughs> From my black fondant, I cut two bands. Not one, but two. Because here's what I know as I've been caking them all. <laughs> Sometimes long bands of fondant can rip as you're like stretching it around the cake. You were thinking, oh, she's making a Pokeball. She can't possibly use a ruler. Ha ha ha. I used a ruler to smooth my black band of fondant into like the little ridge. It was perfect. I'm now gonna cut away a bit of fondant to create a circle in the middle of the cake. I'm gonna use a two and a half inch circle cutter, making sure that I'm cutting away an equal amount of white and red fondant from the center of the front of the cake. I also rolled out a piece of fondant and cut out a two and a half inch circle with a circle cutter. And then I take my black circle of fondant and add it to the center. Does that center circle have a name, Sasha? Um, not that I know of. Okay, I don't want angry comments. They'll be like, it's the pokey center! <laughs> I'm like, sorry. <laughs> I need to add the pokey button. So I roll out some more white fondant and I cut out two circles, one that's two inches and one that's one and three quarter inches. And then I use a little bit of water to glue the smaller circle on top of the larger circle. And then I go back to my pearl luster paint and paint this button. Once the button is dry enough to touch, I add it to the Pokeball with a little bit of water. As a final touch, I added a little bit of pearl luster just to like the top edge of the white fondant, if you know what I mean. And then Pikachu, get in! The Pokeball seems like it's just empty inside. Is there furniture in there, Sasha? <laughs> Nothing. I think it's more important to know if there's cake in the ball. Yes, it. well, there's cake well, there in is. my Pokeball. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, Pikachu, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna eat your house. <laughs>
to understand the flavor that's inside. That you love. Gotta kick them off. It's you and me. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's too far. <laughs> this has nothing on a talking watermelon. A, water, a talking watermelon is like normal now. 